Leos! Subscribe! What up, players? Wobots tail up in this mode. Today we are going to paint up this Ogre Kingdom's Pirate Man Eater. Love this video uh, figure if you haven't seen my other video. And the, the only difference we're doing with him is that his finished model does not have the gut plate with the shield and the two pistols on it like in this figure does because I am going to save that gut plate for another figure because why why waste a perfectly good molded belt and belly which you can draw other stuff on like pirate maps, treasure maps, pirate ships, mermaids, stuff like that. So we'll get to that later in the video. But the first thing we're going to do after you build up your pirate man-eater model is you are going to base him. So for me, I've got my tub of basing sand and I'm just going to put some white Elmer's glue on the base and put some sand on it. We'll show you what it looks like when we get back. The purpose for doing this at the beginning of the video uh, of the model is that I want to see how it'll work if we have the basing sand on the model and then we when we spray undercoated the model with our white primer then it'll lock the sand in place even more with the glue rather than doing it after the entire model is finished gluing the basing material on the bottom so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna glue the sand on now so we'll see you when that is done all right so our ogre pirate man eater now has some basing material now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray the whole thing in a white undercoat and I'm choosing white because we're using brighter colors and the ogres now GW has decided to go with a more pink flesh color warmer flesh tones so they're that means that the clothes that they're wearing can be a lot brighter too which I, I'm kind of happy with I like using brighter colors and um, of course there are gonna be some darks like the slacks are gonna stay dark and uh, black gloves and, and whatnot but the skin tone is gonna be lighter warmer and overall the ogres seem to be going in a different direction aesthetically which I'm I'm pretty okay with. So we're gonna use a white primer undercoat and I'll see you when that's done. Alright so now that the undercoat has dried, our white undercoat is dried, we're gonna paint all skin areas with talarn flesh and all of the hair, so the beard, the hair, the mustache, with and um, as well as the boots, we are going to be painting those in chaos black. So the boots, the beard, the mustache, and the hair with chaos black, and the skin parts all over the model with talarn flesh. So you want to make sure that with talarn flesh that you don't go too thick. As with all foundation colors, you want to put in a little bit of water, mix in just a little bit of water to make it even. And it's okay to, if, if the paint ends up being too thin, and just go over it again in uh, multiple layers. It's better to do multiple layers than to slap it on once, which I've said before on this channel. Just because it's, it's easier to clean up those mistakes than to have to do it again because your, your paint was too thick and it just becomes, it looks really sloppy. Okay, so we'll see you when that's done. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to paint the vest Calthin Brown, which is a foundation color. And we're going to paint the sleeves of the shirt as well as the little head wrap that he's wearing under the hat. We're going to paint that in dark flesh. So two colors for this one. Again, that's Calthin Brown for the vest and dark flesh for the sleeves and the head wrap. Alright, our model should be looking something like this now. And at this point, we are going to paint in the majority of the dark cloth, which would be the pants, the gloves, the pirate hat, and the eye patch. So looking at the model on the GW website, we're going to be painting all of those items with Caradin Granite, which is a Citadel Foundation color. Oh, nope, that's Adeptus Battle Gray. Sorry about that. They both look so similar. Caradin Granite is a little browner though. It has a little bit more of a dark brown to it and added in with the dark gray. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. So, carried in granite, again, that's to the pants, to the gloves, to the pirate hat, and to the eye patch. Okay, we'll see you when that's done. Alright, so here's our ogre man-eater pirate with all of the dark cloth bits painted. I started layering some snake bite leather onto the vest, so I didn't film that part before, but if you just take a look at the clip a couple seconds earlier, you'll see the difference from the Calthan brown, which is a darker reddish brown, to this snake bite leather, which is uh, sets it off a little bit, especially next to the, the pink of the talon flesh. So what we're going to do now is we're going to paint the metal studs on the boots as well as the steel toes of the boots and the belt buckle and the chains around the ogre's neck. We're going to paint all of those bolt gun metal and then we're going to paint the actual belt itself with Kemri Brown. So again that's all the metal on the boots both gun metal, the belt buckle, both gun metal, and the chains around his neck, both gun metal, and the belt itself, Camry Brown. We'll see you when that's done. Alright, so the next thing that I did after painting the belt buckle and the boot studs and the toes on the boots was I decided to get to work on the gold, so I used the Talcept Ochre for the gold coins and the gold medals and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint them with shining gold. The next thing you're going to do after that is start, we'll start with our washes now. So we're going to use Devlin mud and um, we're going to put Devlin mud on the pants, on the belt, on the buckle, on the gloves and on the sleeves, on the vest, on the hat, pretty much everything that we've done so far that isn't black or flesh. And then we're going to paint ogren flesh over the talon flesh, so like on the body, on the face, and that's going to give some really nice shading into that. Okay, so shining gold, or talcept ochre first, and then shining gold on the gold, then devlin mud on everything except the flesh, and for the flesh we're going to put ogren flesh. We'll see you when that's done. Okay, so now the washes are done, we're going to get going on to the rusted metal. And the rusted metal are any of these plates that are bolted onto the ogre's body, as well as the anchor and the cutlass. Thank you for everyone who responded or private messaged me telling me what it was, <laughs> the cutlass. So we're using dark flesh for these, and while you've got the dark flesh out for any of these metal pieces, you can also highlight the parts of the model like the sleeves or the uh, head wrap that have already been dark flesh but have been wa washed with the Devlin mud just to bring the original dark flesh color back up. So again that's any of the metal plates that have been bolted to the ogre's body as well as the anchor and the cutlass. So we will see you when that's done. Okay so now what I did what I've done is I've highlighted the skin and you do that by after you put the flesh wash you keep the shading on the undersides where the shadows would naturally be but then you bring the tone up like I've you can really clearly see what this cheek line, cheek uh, structure is brow his nose his lip and with the arm musculature as well that you bring it back up with talon flesh and then you mix in a little bit of bleached bone or Deneb stone. Either will work just as well. Okay, so highlight the skin back up. Once you're done with that, the dark flesh on all the metal plates should be dry. So what you're going to do then is you're going to stipple on vermin brown, which is this dark reddish color, and or, or not red, but like dark brownish orange color. And what that is going to do is it's going to start to really make the, the rust rusted look pop out. So you want to go on the edges, um, you want to hit hit the long, um, you just want to stipple it. You don't want to make it look too too nice or orderly. You want to make it look kind of random and 
let me show you the. I, I'm kind of going off of the Games Workshop website tutorial for this. So the first step, which we did with our plates, was we painted on this dark flesh color, and now we're stippling on vermin brown, right there. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next, and I will see you when we are finished with that on this model. Woo, I love this rusted metal stuff. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to stipple on Macarius Solar Orange to all of these metal pieces. Macarius Solar Orange, and that will bring out the, the orange even more, and it'll tone down the dark red of the dark flesh. Okay, so Macarius Solar Orange is a foundation color. Looks like this. And we'll see you when that's done. All right, our rusted metal now looks fantastically rusty and gross, which is awesome. So we're going to now bring in a little bit of the metal, like where the rust is chipped away from use and scratches and stuff. So we're gonna use bolt gun metal and we're going to touch up all the edges. And if you wanna add in little scratches and dents, you definitely wanna hit most of the edges for the, these little metal plates that he's bolted onto his skin, or onto his pants and onto his back. Hit the edges, hit the tops of the bolts, and hit the edges of the anchor. And, um, and then at the same time, also with the bolt gun metal, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the feather deneb stone, the bottom part of the feather deneb stone, so not the tip of the feather, but like the, the middle part deneb stone, as well as the bandages deneb stone, which is a Citadel Foundation color. So that's bolt gun metal on all the metal, <laughs> on all the rusted metal, and then denim stone on the feather and the bandages, or the, the arm, what you call it, the handle of the anchor. Okay, see you when that's done. All right, so here is our rusted metal. And it is looking pretty good. You could stop here, but we're gonna go just one little step further. And what we're going to do next is we're going to take Devlin mud and we're going to wash all of these rusted metal pieces so that it'll tie the, the bolt gun metal chips to the, to the older uh, rust. And what it's also going to do is we're going to finish that after we've done Devlin mud over all of these metal rusted metal pieces. After that's dry, we're going to put on a little bit of chain mail and we're gonna make those chips even finer and more spaced out than the boat gun metal was. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna show that the boat gun metal chips, after it has the Devlin mud, will be dull and faded, whereas the chips where the chainmail are gonna be are gonna be the newer ones, and it's gonna make it look a lot more weather beaten and worn, and it's also gonna dull down the orange a little bit if you think the orange is too bright. Another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint the buttons Caradon Granite on the vest. So Caradon Granite buttons. And getting into the feather, oh I added dark flesh to the top of the feather. And we're gonna put paint Devlin Mud also on the handle of the anchor to tie the bandages together. So all you have to do with the anchor is just slap Devlin Mud all over it. As well as the feather, Devlin Mud onto the feather. And Devlin Mud, if you can add in a little bit of Bad At Black as well, so that it doesn't just look dirty, but it also looks like dark in all of the little recesses of the feather. And I'm really happy with the way this ogre is coming along. He's, uh, if you're following along at home, your ogre should be looking pretty good. Um, then after that, all we've got left is the pirate, uh, the parrot, Noblar parrot, and the base, and we should be good to go. You could get started on the base, but we're gonna, I'm gonna leave that to a little bit longer. So let's get finished with the rusted metal first. Devlin mud on all the rusted metal pieces, followed by fine, sparse applications of chain mail. And then Devlin mud on the bandages, and Devlin mud and bad at black on the feather. And the top of the feather, either dark flesh, or if you wanna go with a different color, flesh, uh, not flesh, but if you wanna go with a different color, like blue or, or green, then, you know, however you wanna do it. Okay, we'll see you when that's done. Also carried in granite on the buttons, okay. 
All right, so now our our rusted metal looks suitably beaten and chipped, and the chainmail makes the fresher chips look even brighter. If you want to go even with mithril silver, mithril silver, that's also an option if the chainmail isn't bright enough to show the newer chips, but it gives it a really nice bit of shine over the over the orange rusted look of it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get to work on highlighting before we get to the knoblar. So you actually want to get to work on highlighting. And the arm sleeves we're going to highlight with dark flesh and then add uh, just a touch of dwarf flesh or some other kind of pinkish yellowish color. So I would say dwarf flesh, talern flesh, something like that would, would be would be fine just to do that the edge highlightings where the slits are and I'm gonna go attempt to do that and I will show you what that looks like when we get back. Again that's the, the sleeves for the shirt and you could also do a little bit of on the headband highlighting back up with dark flesh and then mixing in a little bit of dwarf flesh into the dark flesh. So now our sleeves are highlighted up pretty nicely. And I did a final edge extreme highlight of just pure dwarf flesh, watered down just a little bit, and I think it uh, it it blends really pretty well. So if you need to tie it together again, then you can always reapply a little bit of watered down Devlin mud. But I'm I'm pretty happy with this right now. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna highlight all of the carrot and granite things like the pants, the gloves, the hat and the eye patch. And I'm gonna do that by mixing a two to one carrot and granite, I'm sorry, a one to two. So one part carrot and granite to two parts bleached bone. And what that does, does is it takes that dark brown, gray carrot and granite color, and it gives it a little bit of a yellowish, that bleached bone yellowy kind of color to make it stand out. So hit only the edges again, like the edges of the gloves, any part where there are creases, where the light would especially catch because of the, the creases at the top of it. Okay, so I'm gonna do that and then we'll be right back. Alright, so we highlighted up the pants and all the carrot and granite pieces. After that, I highlighted up the beard with some codex gray, some fortress gray, and some skull white, and then I washed it down with badab black. I also highlighted up the boots which were black, I lined the edges with codex gray, and then I washed it with Bada black. So there's a little bit of an edge highlight on the boots there. Okay, so the next thing we're ready to do is the parrot, the knoblar parrot. So we're gonna paint the actual knoblar parts first, which I think are the ears, the crossed arms, and the feet poking out from underneath the little parrot costume. Also, uh, before I get to that, there's a little metal plate on the shoulder, like little shoulder armor that I just painted bolt gun metal and then I washed with Devlin mud. So I didn't do the rusted armor effect because that's not a bolted on piece of metal. Um, not sure what that is really, if, it, if it's something else, but I, I just assumed it to be a little piece of protective metal plating. So, okay, so for the Knoblar's arms, ears, and feet, we're doing a mix of Catechin Green and Scorched Brown. So that's a one-to-one -one mix of Catechin Green and Scorched Brown, and that's gonna be our base coat for the Knoblar's skin. Okay, we'll see you when that's done. So I just finished up the Knoblar, and to do that, you are going to need, after your first base coat of Catechin Green and Scorched Brown, you're just gonna need Catechin Green and a little bit of Codex Gray and Fortress Gray and you're going to be mixing them up steadily progressively highlighting. Fortress Gray is lighter so those highlights are going to be saved for the very end and just on the very edges and the tips and it's really up to you how light you want to go as long as you have that dark muddy green brown skin for the Knoblar and this paint scheme is taken right off the, the Games Workshop website as well under their painting articles, under Ogre Kingdom's assembly and painting for Knoblars. So there is that. I put Deneb Stone for the Knoblars toenails. And I'm also going to use Deneb Stone for the strap that goes around the head. And
that is right over here, the strap for the parrot mask. So I'm going to paint that with denim stone, and you're going to paint the beak with carried in granite, which is like one of my most favorite colors now. And you're going to add a little bit of denim stone to paint the little streaks on the beak. So I'm going to do that really quick, and then I'll show you what that looks like, Then we will finish up the parrot. So here's our little Knoblar parrot. I painted the little side coverings of his headdress. I painted it, oops, sorry, focus, skull white. And that is supposed to look like the toucan's head. Right? And then the denim stone strap that goes around the head. And I painted the top like a Caribbean toucan parrot green. So I used snot green for that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to paint the feathers of the rest of his body. So for the blue part, I'm going to take it, a, start it with the base of enchanted blue, which should go on very nicely because it's even though it's not a foundation color, when you prime a model with white, then it's a lot easier for regular Citadel colors to 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 adhere to and to to stick to and to pop nicely. So enchanted blue for for the blue feathers. And for the yellow feathers, we're going to build up from a Tau Sept Ochre. So I'm going to go according to the Games Workshop website scheme. So as you can see, here is the snot green headpiece. I did carried in granite for the beak, and then I added in bleached bone for these streaks. I did fortress gray and then highlighted up with white for the white part of the headpiece here. The ears and the arms and the leg feet I painted as a knoblar, and I'm going to do blue and yellow. So enchanted blue as a base and then tasseped ochre as a base for the yellow. So I'll see you when that's done. Alright, so the enchanted blue and the tasseped ochre went on really well for me and so I started to layer up. For the blue feathers, I layered up using ice blue and for the yellow feathers, I started layering up using Ian and Dark Sun and then next I'm going to layer up with sunburst yellow. So what that's going to do is make the colors really bright and really light and make them pop out from the rest of the darker tones of the ogre's vest and his sleeves. Which is what we want because this little knoblar parrot is, you know, the best thing ever. I also started shading the ogre's eyes the, to get that real bloodshot look under his eyes. I used Leviathan Purple Wash and uh, a little bit earlier I used Leviathan Purple Wash as well where his belly meets the belt to give it a little bit of that that bruised kind of kind of look and a little bit purple under those things. So I've also started getting to work on the base. I'm gonna try to make a unified theme with my ogres. So I went with a black base and Camry Brown for the trunk. For the sides of the trunk I'm just gonna paint them straight silver because I've got golden coins. So silver bolt gun metal on the sides of the trunk. Camry Brown in the middle, like I said. And there's also a skull here. And I, I'm not sure what, what that one is, that little white bit, because it's too thick to be a coin. And I'm not sure what it is. It could just be a rock or something. And the, this is a ruby or a gem under his foot. So in the Games Workshop, picture it's green like a like a gem or like a like a piece of jade so I'm gonna try to copy that because I think he's got enough red on his body already so I'm gonna do that by painting it painting it chaos black and then dark angels green and then highlighting the edge with a mix of goblin green and white skull white to get that gleaming edge look also I'm gonna paint the skull with denim stone and then wash it with Bada Black. So we're doing a lot of things with the base. Again, we're painting all the the basing material black. We're painting the chest Camry Brown and Bolt Gun Metal. And then we're gonna, the gold is already painted. We're going to get to work on the gem by painting it Chaos Black and then Dark Angels Green and then Goblin Green mixed with Skull White for the edge highlighting and then then up stone for the skull and then wash it down with bad at black. So we'll see what it, that all looks like when we come back. And also again the, the Knoblar parrot is gonna be 
building up on the blue feathers with ice blue over the enchanted blue and over the talcept ochre yellow feathers we're going to build up with Ianden dark sun and then sunburst yellow or or golden yellow either, either of those work depending on how what shade of yellow you want your feathers to be and how bright you want them to be so I will go and do those and we'll show you what they look like when we get back all right players so here is the knoblog parrot all done up and completed the yellows of sunburst yellow really uh, make the yellows bright and eye-catching against the blues the, and the green, the ice blue, and the snot green. I gave the snot green a little wash of Thraka green, which ties it together, and, and then I highlighted back up just a little bit with snot green. And I finished basing the model. I decided to do this red, whatever protruding thing that was, as a ruby, so I, I did a black undercoat, chaos black, and then I think I built up with scab red, then blood red, and then I highlighted the edges with a mix of blood red and skull white, and then I gloss varnished both the ruby and the green jade, emerald, or emerald, whatever that is. I highlighted the edges of the coin with my mithril silver to give it a shiny silver reflective edging, which I think works very well. And I based the bottom of the base, kind of like my Chaos Beastman, which is, after painting it black, I painted the basing material scorched brown, and then vermin, vermin brown, I dry brushed it vermin brown, and then I dry brushed Deneb stone really lightly, and then I based with step grass and grass green from Army Painter. So I also gave the I don't know if I mentioned it, but I gave both of the, the gems uh, art coat gloss varnish to make them sparkle in the light. So I'm gonna finish this pirate model here. I'm gonna finish this Warboss tutorial right here because I'm gonna make a different uh, Warboss tutorial on just a tattoo that I'm planning to do for the belly. But this is how you can paint your own ogre pirate man eater according to the Games Workshop scheme. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. The only thing different is the basing, which I'm doing differently. I decided not to do like a snow theme because I want my ogres to have more of a warmer, warmer kind of kind of theme, just because uh, color scheme, just because of the the newer, warmer skin flesh tones that GW is making their ogres have. It allows us to use brighter colors, and I think that that helps a lot more than the old dark gray, dark green color scheme that the ogres had. So thanks for watching this Warboss tutorial, hope it was helpful to any of you on how to do anything, specifically this ogre pirate man-eater, but I hope you might have found some tips and tricks and some ways of doing colors for other things like the sleeves, highlighting with bleached bone, or, or the dark slacks, and the matching glove and hat. And please leave a comment, subscribe, like this video before you go, and happy talk like a pirate day! Arrrr!